It's the 12th of May and I'm Tom Glasson. Welcome to The Roast. Now, with the government planning to axe 76 departments, I thought I had best take a look to make sure we're not on the list. Tom Glasson? Oh, God, I'm on the list! Wait, no, oh. <laughs> it's okay, I read it wrong. It, it doesn't say Tom Glass and it says National Water Commission. Woof! For a second I thought we were in trouble. Tonight, the government cuts a lot of government departments and Treasurer Joe Hockey is accused of being the Monopoly Man. First though, Mark Humphreys joins us with the headlines. It was Mother's Day yesterday and Treasurer Joe Hockey celebrated by appearing on the Today Show with his mother, Laurie Oakes. Mr Oakes interviewed Mr Hockey about all things budget related. Laurie started with the Coalition's proposal to freeze MPs' salaries. The freeze is the government's way to be seen to be sharing the burden with the rest of Australia, though I'm not sure what burden they're sharing by temporarily refusing to give themselves more money. And there's another problem with the plan. Someone in the party hasn't been a fan of salary freezes. When Kevin Rudd as MPs' salaries during the global financial crisis. Tony Abbott sneered that it was just a populist stunt. Well, it was then. It was just a populist stunt when they did it, Laurie. This will be more of a populist tour de force. But that was just the start of the political bullet dodging Mr Hockey was required to do. Watch as he deftly weaves his way around a seemingly clear-cut broken promise on introducing new taxes. Tony Abbott's specific commitment, quoting directly, what you will get under us are tax cuts without new taxes. Well, you, new we taxes. are getting tax cuts. We are getting but tax cuts. But we're getting cuts. new taxes? Well, don't assume they are new taxes. We never said that we were going to uh, never change a tax or alter a tax. Yeah, they never said that. Keep up, Laurie. It's not enough to focus on what was said. You need to remember all the infinite things that were never said. You can't deny, can you, that, uh, that imposing a deficit tax, a 2% rise on incomes over $180,000, I can't deny that that's a new tax. Well, I'm not playing word games. I feel like we have a clip contradicting that. We never said that we were going to uh, never change a tax or alter a tax. Laurie also brought up the potential changes to the pension age and things got a little testy. But uh, you're hitting people on welfare. You're going to hit pensioners by... Uh, by changing we're, not, we're not hitting anyone, Laurie. That's a relief. The government has made this budget sound so ominous, I was half expecting it to include a scheme to beat the shit out of pensioners. And, of course, it wouldn't be a budget interview without some talk about a surplus. That one thing a treasurer probably would actually beat the shit out of a pensioner to get. Uh, well, Laurie, uh, we were never going to get it to a surplus under what we inherited. There is a clear pathway to a surplus. So you're not going to have a surplus, but you've got a pathway to surplus. That's a much better plan than what the old guy had. There's still no surplus, but of course the fact is that we've got a pathway back to surplus. Wayne's pathway, of course, turned out to be a cul-de-sac. But if you were following along, the real star of the interview wasn't Joe Hockey, it was his boss. Tony Abbott said, let me quote another Tony Abbott line. Tony Abbott wrote a book called Battle Lines. Look, one of the reasons I like Tony Abbott is because he, he said so many interesting things in the past. And that's one of the reasons Joe Hockey doesn't like Tony Abbott. For the roast, I'm Mark Humphreys. Thank you, Mark. Well, Joe Hockey might have had a difficult day with Laurie Oakes, but it was nothing compared to the criticism he copped over the weekend for smoking a cigar. You see, when you have a 24-hour news cycle to fill, you will clutch at whatever straws you can find. And the roast's own morning show, Roast Breakfast, decided it was not going to miss out in scraping from the bottom of that barrel. Honestly, Clark, did you see this next story? Now, Joe Hockey and Matthias Corman. Oh, you mean Joe Ho and the Corminator? Oh. <laughs> Clark. <laughs> now, that's the Treasurer and the <laughs> Finance Minister. Now, they were caught on camera smoking cigars. Can you bring up the photo? There it is. Oh, now, I did mm -hmm. see this story, and I, I read that in the paper, the President of the Australian Council on Smoking and Health mm -hmm. said, we don't need treasurers promoting smoking. And he's right. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't need promotion of smoking. For no, the kids. Yeah, that's right. And where was that? I didn't actually see that in the paper. Oh, it was underneath that giant photo of hockey smoking. Ah, right, right, right. Well, next up, did you hear Prime Minister Tony Abbott had a beer? Promoting liver damage for infants. Mm -hmm. Clark, why is the Prime Minister trying to kill our infants? Yep, the roast breakfast there, putting the me in media. No matter how tenuous the link. We'll be back in a moment. Hey guys, have you ever engaged in a vice to help you relax after the busiest time in your career? 
Was it blown out of proportion by the media? Did you do it to unwind? Why can't you just cry in the shower like a normal person? We'd love to hear about it at the Roast TV or hashtag Roast TV. Finally tonight, the Coalition is set to axe 76 government bodies and shove their remains into the Commission of Audit Woodchipper. Spoiler alert for Fargo, by the way, that is pretty much the end of that movie. And with Wednesday's budget looming, the government is also considering the privatisation of many other agencies in an effort to save up to $500 million. See, it was either that or win 500 episodes of Millionaire Hot Seat, and no one but Eddie Maguire knows that much trivia about international flags. Yeah, see, I want to say that's Romania. Oh, Chad, what's Romania? Oh, I played Maguire. The government also intends to merge some existing agencies, with ABC News reporting... The Administrative Appeals Tribunal, the Classification Review Board, the Migration Review Tribunal and Refugee Review Tribunal will be amalgamated. So by combining the Film Classification Board and Refugee Tribunals, the government could make a horrible refugee decision, reject the appeal, then ban the documentary about it, all from the one office. And while it will save money, it is likely to cost approximately 16,000 federal public servants instead of the government's pre-election target of 12,000 positions. That's 4,000 more job cuts than the government had promised, meaning a rise in unemployment. Or, as the government could spin it, a surplus in unemployed people. And all these job cuts could start making public servant the unstable career choice that parents fear their kids will pursue. Dad, I want to work in government. Oh, no son of mine. But it's all I want to do. I want to be a bureaucrat. No son of mine. But Dad, get your head out of the clouds, boy, before I knock some sense into you. You're a ballet dancer. Your brother's a ballet dancer. I'm a ballet dancer. You're not going to be a civil servant. It's just not a secure job. Now get your ass back to ballet school, you little bastard. Oh, they just wants the best for that little bastard. Now, there is a whole heap of stuff up for grabs in the government's privatisation plans. The garage sale of assets includes Malcolm Turnbull's old broadband router, which the NBN will buy to cover all of Australia, designer clothes that Julie Bishop wore once and therefore can never wear again, and Matthias Cormann's old razor scooter. The Coalition is also considering privatising Australian hearing. And that's fine, so long as it is just privatising one cent out of five. But if we do have to cut an Australian cent, I'd go with taste. Although if you look at Mr Abbott's wardrobe, perhaps they already have. Truly, pairing a white shirt with a blue tie and a blue suit? Honestly, you walk out of the house of reps like that, you scruffy dog. And alongside that, they also want to palm off the Defence Housing Authority, which organises accommodation for soldiers and their families. And it's a bolder man than me who tells the soldier that can snipe someone from a kilometre away that the rent's going up. Finally, they want to privatise the Royal Australian Mint. And I do believe we have footage of what that sale would look like. Mmm, and when it rains that hard, you know there's a drought coming. Tom, I'm no economist. Get out of here. But where does this privatising madness end? If the Coalition continues to sell off assets to make money to cover Labor's mistakes, then Labor's just going to get back into power waste all of our money again, and the Libs will have nothing left to sell to fix the problem. At this rate, soon the only thing the government will actually own is this. What's that? It's the P from the giant Parliament House sign on Parliament Hills. There isn't a giant Parliament House sign. All Parliament Hills. Ah, then Canberrans will now be buying their nudie mags from Ornography Galore. Oh, well, regardless of who's to blame, one of the reasons given for these mass cuts was that, like some sort of poorly planned orgy, there were too many bodies. When the Coalition got into power, nobody could actually tell them exactly how many different individual government bodies there were, possibly due to the fact that someone else had abolished the body for counting government bodies. But without knowing exactly how many bodies there are or what they all do, it's kind of hard to know if we'll miss what the government axes until after it's gone. Uh, no, nah, it's not looking good. We're going to have to take out your tonsils. Oh, well, I hear you don't really need them anyway. No, nah, no, nah, no, nah, mate, you don't need them. Um, we'll also be taking out your through puddle. My what? Oh, your through puddle. It's uh, totally unnecessary. You don't need it. Uh, we can easily cut it out. Uh. Yeah, off the bench. Touch your toes. Oh, OK. And you, you sure I'm not going to miss this through puddle in the future? Oh, well, you might, but by then it'll already be gone. OK, stand still. <sighs> And this isn't going to hurt, is it? <coughs> yeah, I've got him. And just like nondescript government agencies, if you cut out the throttle without knowing exactly what it is, well, it could come back to haunt you. Though not until after the current government is long gone and can't be blamed for it. Good night. You give me that throttle? Oh, I was born without one. Uh!